down, right? I have some very rare Guillaume Ajoulets here tonight. Oh, look what I got, folks. Take a look at this, Wilson. I am going to put them next to the Ronnie Woods. Nineteen fourteen S. Came out of San Francisco, gridded MS six four. It is a stunning coin in MS six four. Hard coin to get in grades of sixty two and higher. I only have two of them. I saw a competitor uh, selling. What is he? Yo, you got it. Yeah, right there. What do you have the list at? I need to put my 3,800. That's no, more than that. On the 14S, because. That competitor, we're not going to mention what you told me about that competitor. You remember what you told me? That you told me don't say that on TV. That comp I'm not going to say it on TV yet. They added up for 4,600. And theirs might have only been 6, 2 or 6, 3. Yeah, mine is 6, 4. Do you remember what I told you? You told me about that competitor? Should I say it, Patty? Or she's looking mad. Don't. I'm not. Tell you what, I only have two. I'd be lucky to keep them. Right now, folks, uh, what a lot of people, camera two, what a lot of people are not telling you is People are buying up gold and silver and platinum and palladium in astronomical amounts. And coins like this that six months ago I could have gotten a few more, I can't now. You got to fight for every one of them. And I mentioned one competitor, 4,600. Look, I only have two of these left. We sold some the other night and I have two left right here 2995 dollars that is a low as a 1.5 million struck most of them got melted down many of them you got to understand they were meant in San Francisco so they would travel across country in a bag, a canvas bag, with hundreds of them in there. The face, uh, the front of one coin would be dung by the rim of another coin. So to have so few bag marks and be able to get these at $2,950, $995, I only have the two left. And I want to thank you. I do not mind holding on to these. To me, this is real money. Do you know now, Wilson, the Federal Reserve was started in 1913. All right. Do you know what? If you had taken a dollar in 1913 because of inflation and excess money printing, do you know what that one dollar is worth today, Wilson? Three cents. Three cents. It's lost 97% of its value. Gold is doing great. Today, gold, a little over 1,800 an ounce. You can buy as much today for one ounce of gold as you could 20 years ago, 40 years ago. The, the names have changed. But that much, whether it's food, lodging, transportation, gold holds its value and has done so for thousands of years. 
That's why I'm big on gold. And I think the move that people are getting ready to see, it's going to be one for the record books in a good way. Only have two of the 14 from San Francisco. Now I brought one uber, uber rare coin here, Wilson. Oh, I love this coin. Take a look at that. 1913 D. Struck in Denver, Colorado in 1913. Now, Wilson, when you go in close on the date, you will see a, a D right next to the date, the 1913. Keep coming in. Is that as close as you can? Let me. It's right above the one in the three. Folks, this coin was minted in Denver. And just to give you some facts on this coin, and I don't want the coin to fall down. So I'm going to tell you, coin, Stay. Maybe he's anything like my dog, he won't. All right, now, let me tell you about the 1913D. The 1913D has an NGC. You're looking at a PCGS. But the 1913D has an NGC population that is less than 1% of the population for the most common 1924s in 6.4. The 1913D also has a minage that is just 4.4% of the highest, the higher minage 1928. The 1913D has everything going for it, and it is just stunning. Now, Ashley typed me, the, the total mining manage was only 393,500. The manage of a 1928 was 8,800,000 plus. But look what Google wrote about the MS64 Plus by NGC. And folks, I only pick out coins I think could plus. But read that paragraph right there. The 1913D, St. Gaudens. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me read it to you. Uh, Gold Double Eagle is graded MS64 Plus by NGC. This coin has a population of only 37 coins uh, in that grade, 64 plus. This coin has a manage of 393,500, population of 37 coins at this grade level with only 160 ever graded higher than MS64. MS64 plus by NGC. I like PCGS. This is a rare coin. I only have one. And as we speak, I know it's the Christmas season's over. New Year's is coming up. That's real money, folks. As far as rare coins go, when you have 393,000 500, which is a minuscule minage. They were minted in Denver, Colorado, so they traveled on a, in, a, in a bag, canvas bag with hundreds of coins. The, the, the rims of the one coin banging the face, the obverse and reverse of the coin. To have one, an MS64, you're living well. And to have one where total minage, 393,500, 
the 1913D, the entire mintage is only 4.4% of the 1928. This is one of the rarest coins in N64. And that's a stunning example. And Ashley, you know, on some of the other gold I got tonight, I was talking to Ashley, I have to raise my price. And my greedy, no, gold has gone up day after day. And it moves in a funny way where all of a sudden it jumps $35 in a few minutes, you know. And I'll tell you what, what did I have this up for before? Because this is the only one I got. Oh, yeah. And that 7800 is a price off of one of my competitors' website. That 7800 is a comp that we pulled off of one of my competitors' website. I don't know if it's still up there. If they're just so embarrassed, they probably took it down. Because I'm beating them, Patty. I'm showing people what they should really pay. I only got one coin. Oh, this is too cheap. I see ads for so much more, but ready? 4695 dollars that is the last one i have that is uber rare so few have ever made it to six four most of them got melted down a lot of the coins from denver you got to understand they would be on a train they would go south some would go north to North and South Dakota, but I mean, you're talking about one of the rare of the rares. Total minage of 393,000. 500,000, 500, 393,500. That's such a great price. I was informed by Ashley before the show at her house. She lives at a house with six dogs. One of them is 147 years old in dog years. 21 years old. And that just proves what I was telling you, Ashley. When you feed, and what kind of dog is it? It's a German Shepherd. A miniature what? A miniature Doberman Pinscher. Yes. And this is what I was telling you, Ashley. You can feed them dog food at the store, but when you cut up human remains, and feed him to that, that's what's keeping him alive. And you know, Patty, people are wondering what happened to her neighbor's leg. There's no proof. All right, nobody on this. All right, well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Move to the tray of gold here. Folks, I should raise the price on these coins. I'm not, well, I might. Take a look at that. This, they are flying out of the country. What you are looking at in the capsules are, show Monty. This is He's 21 years old. Yeah. 
Wow, that's very, that's, that's amazing. What you have there, folks, are two types of gold coins. The ones on top, and the ones encapsulated in plastic, are 20 francs. They are AU, about uncirculated, 20 Swiss francs. There is 0.18, what, what, what is it, the uh, point? On the Swiss francs, they're called Helvetian francs. When you were an American fighter pilot in World War II, in your emergency kit, you either had a 20... 0.1867. Just a little under uh, a fifth of an ounce of gold. They gave that to pilots that they're shot down. They got something to barter with to get to freedom, to get to the underground. Now, 2211. I only have 13 of these. And let me just tell you, the prices on these, because gold has been going up and up and up, uh, list, if I'm, uh, hmm, hang on. I want to make 13 people so happy. I'm doing some Jethro Bodine. List price on 2078. All right, hang on. Whoa! See, they just keep going up. And, and folks, these are AUs. Most of the dates are in the 1930s. Here, I'll tell you what dates I have here. 20s, 30s. Hang on. Well, Wilson, you can read the dates. This one right here. 1935. Most of them are in the 1930s. You might find a few in the 20s. But folks, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you guys a price that you're going to get. Ashley, I want people to really like this show right now. I want 13 people. To have to go to the doctor, Patty. I want 13 people that are going to be so happy, Ashley. They got to go to a plastic surgeon to remove the smile off their face. It's going to be that good of a brace. Oh, I'm guy. Here, here's what I'm going to do. Oh, don't get me going. No. Oh, I can do a little better than that, but. All right, now if you want one of these, all right, camera, uh, let me go with your camera, Wilson. Folks. They don't want to tell you how bad inflation is going to get. It's going to get bad. You know that. You see it. They can tell you it's not bad, but you go to the grocery store. You go to the gas station. You see it everywhere. Didn't they tell you about six months ago it's transitory? Didn't uh, Janet Yeltsin say it's 
It's going to pass through. You're not even going to see it. It's going to go right back to normal. It ain't. I got my bachelor's degree in economics from Southern Oregon State College. Got my master's degree in economics from University of Nevada, Reno. And I got to tell you, they ain't seen nothing yet. And to see real hyperinflation, you got to go back to the Weimar Republic in the 1920s in Germany, where inflation was going up so fast that the price of an empty wine bottle, all right, the morning after, in other words, you go in to the nicest restaurant, get the best meal they have, the following morning, that empty wine bottle could buy you two dinners the next night. It was astronomical. Inflation was just going up and up. There were times in the Weimar Republic and also in Argentina when they were in Hungary, where they had a really bad deal, they would price the meal while they were serving it to you. Can you believe that, Ashley? You could sit down and say, how much is your finest steak? All right, it's, it's, it's $49. If you order right now, you, you decide, you have some appetizers, say, all right, I'll take the steak. It's 56 now. That's how bad it can get. And all they do is print more money and tell you they're not. They just passed a $1.7 trillion omnibus bill. It's 4,000 pages. No one's even read it. I'm going to give you a deal. Actually, I said I had to raise prices. I'm not. I'm not on these 13 coins. What did I used to have them up for? Even though gold has gone up and I can't replace them at this cost, what was my last cost on these? Unbelievable. It should be every other network, it's $549. Watch this. $495. Just forget about the one-tenth of an ounce. Let me do this so you don't get confused. Let me take the one-tenth of an ounce coins out of here. We are talking, don't you roll off that. We are talking about the 13 Hel Helvetia Switch. I would be all over that. I'll tell you folks, you're going to see people. You're going to believe. You, you don't believe me yet. Watch. And if you do have $495 by one, by two, by three, I only have 13. This is real wealth. This isn't imaginary wealth. This isn't money that you might be able to get out or can't. This is real. And it's been real wealth for several thousand years. And if you go to the Federal Reserve's own website and go to any year and see what gold costs, the consumer price index, everything, gold, that gold coin in 1960, in 1960 dollars, can buy the same amount it can now in 2022. Because gold holds its own. And I hope you're out there at 495. No takers. All right. I am not upset. I have a little one-tenth of an ounce, but let me get off of this stuff. And just so you, because I got to be very careful with those. Here, so they can see the S on that 14S, that's what your coin looks like. At 2995 a competitor is selling it for 70 uh, for 46 or 4700 look at that I only have two of them 
I'm glad I have two. All right, I'll tell you what. Let me go to the, somebody in Dallas, Texas has to be watching me. Well, I don't know, they don't have to be. I don't know, I can't even sell two Ronnie Woods. Look at that. Now, just so you know, this piece right here. Oh, I got a rare Chang tonight. This is Charles Fazzino. He was born in 1955. He does paper cut sculptures. This was for Super Bowl. I don't know what Super Bowl. 2009, Charles Fazzino signed it, painted it, did everything. Now, if it was a New York 3D, uh, look at that. 19,500. This is 3D. It pops right out at you. Here is a Charles Fazzino Circus. I'm trying to figure out what this is. Circus Days. All right, here's one right here. Serigraph. Look at this. $16,000. Right there. And Wilson, here is Charles Fazzino, New Year's on Broadway, 3D limited edition, paper cut like this with cert. Look at this right here, 12,500, and I printed that eight years ago. Somebody's got to love the Dallas Cowboys. Did they win that Super Bowl? Talking the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. Well, they were in it and they were playing in Dallas. Look, the roof on the stadium is open. This, you know, 15,000 plus. But I'm going to do something even stupider. Yeah, I can, Patty. Patty's going, now nah, you've been pretty stupid so far. No, she didn't say that. She's very nice to me. So it wasn't 2009, but we did this in 09. What year did the Cowboys play? And it doesn't matter what year because it would help if you're a Cowboys fan. So we got 14, 15,000. Hey, guess what? Matt, how many people are viewing me? on the internet only. And is it possible to have a negative number on your account? Well, would this negative number be scaling? Say what? If there were negative numbers watching you, would that mean you're scaling? No, that means... Well, for those nice people, that are watching me because I get on 
Dish Network in 11 minutes. I hope you're out there. Start at zero, $100 increments. I know. Doesn't matter how many thousand I paid for it, Ashley. Those people that have put up with me for this long. It's got a $19,000 cop. Yes. That's, it could be any team. What is that, What's, what is that? Well, Dallas has a, a retractable roof, but Ah. And we have a bid of zero. He sculpts the paper. He hand does everything on it. It's got the NFL official seal. Number 46 of 250, and look at that. You got the NFL seal. This is probably 15 grand at the game. Yeah, hologram. And I'm starting at zero, $100 increments. One hundred has been bid. One of the guys has a price of seventeen thousand, and I'm at a hundred dollars, Wilson. I cannot lose money on pieces like this very long. But you know what we do about stuff like that tonight, don't you, Wilson? We make it up on volume. <laughs> Custom framed. Oh, I forgot to show you the cert on the back. Museum edition from the Dallas Cowboys. Look at this. You got a letter from the Dallas Cowboys on the back. Look at that. That is pretty cool. Museum edition. Done by Fazzino is the artist, Charles Fazzino. Wow. Yeah, this is 17000 I am at $200 going once. Are you, this is crazy. This is hand done. I mean, he hand cuts it. He does everything. He's got the Dallas Cowboys. He's got Arlington right there. He's got, this is our year, $200. Going once. 300 has been bid. This is so cheap. This is 17000 in the price guide. And the good news is I only got to make it six minutes. And I got Guillaume Majule, Jang T. Vang. I got everything in art and coins. All right, we're at 300 Anybody going to make it for? No, we, we, we have three behind you, Kiki. 
Looking for four. Three hundred looking for four. All in. I'm going to lose big on this. 300 going once. Are you kidding? Four hundred has been bid. Four hundred going once. Four hundred dollars on a record loss. Going twice. Kiki, who is your customer? Mr. D. All in, all said. Hey, uh, Kiki, give me his address because I might have to steal this back late at night. <laughs> Sold. Oh, that, well, that hurt. That hurt. All right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do for four minutes. Yeah. Cry. No, I'm not going to cry. Don't cry, Don't cry. Folks, this is the legendary artist Steve Kaufman. He died, I don't know if it was 2012, 2015, but look at the back of this. This is number one of 200, signed S-A-K. Steve Kaufman was a pop artist. He originally worked for Andy Warhol. He was on The Tonight Show. What's that? Two, three, five, four. Two, three, five, four. I have comps for like 12 to 14,000 when it is not number one. This is number one of the artist proof. One of 200. Number one of the edition. Not artist proof. Number one of 200. Uh, Steve Kaufman's, Bruce Willis is a collector. Uh, I mean, there are all kinds. Yeah, you don't have to look for to see Steve Kaufman's. His, uh, he painted a Harley Davidson that Went for a quarter of a million dollars. I mean, he, but what I like best about him, what year did Steve Kaufman die? Um, hey, Patty, what year did Steve Kaufman die? Um, you know, the, the thing is, he helped gangs. He, he taught gangs how to silk screen, how to make art. He had over 30 charities. He was the one that built the Holocaust, uh, one of the Holocaust memorials. And Steve Kaufman is a pop artist. He died in 2010. Folks, this is number one of the edition. Uh, retail, what does it say? Let me put, I don't know, my glasses don't work. 22,000 for number one. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And I get Dish Network in one minute so I could stall. Or I can just start the auction. This is number one on canvas. Steve Kaufman. Started zero $200 increments. This is pretty cool. Died in 2010. And I want to thank everybody. I got a lot of art coming up, a lot of coins coming up. Got a rare Jang T Fang. Have some very rare Azulays.
looking for the open. What do they say? And folks, I want to thank you. What are you doing for New Year's, Wilson? You're throwing a nude party? Oh, you said New Year's party. A huge nude party. Yeah, I guess it would be once they told everybody, hey, come to my house, everybody's nude. It would become a huge party, wouldn't it, Wilson? All right, anybody can open this. I got a very rare number one of the edition. The man died 12 years ago, almost 13 years ago. I'm starting at zero, $200 increments. Do we have the open? Hey, I'm on dish. Camera two, am I on dish, Matt? You're not just teasing me? Hi, Barry Chapel, coming to you live for my Wednesday night art show. And I have some Jang T Fang, some credible gold coins, some tougher date gold coins. Got a lot of art. I am sitting here auctioning. 200 has now been bid. I am auctioning the number one of an edition done by the late, great Steve Kaufman. He supported over 30 charities. He's the one that painted the Holocaust Memorial. He uh, painted a 9-11 Memorial. I mean, Steve Kaufman uh, was on The Tonight Show and a lot of other places. But take a look at this. Look at the number on this. Number one of 200, S-A-K. That's how he signs his name, Steve Kaufman. This is the number one of the edition. He died in 2010. He sold one work for over uh, 300,000. And this is an amazing Steve Kaufman. Who's going to make it four, six, eight? Because I'm sitting here at $200 on a $22,000, uh, number one of an edition. The man died 12 years ago. If you go to Steve Kaufman, you'll see some of his uh, pieces just like this for eighteen, nineteen thousand. Four hundred has been bid, folks. This is number one. It is a canvas Kaufman. He died ten years ago, almost. Died in 2010, 12 years ago, almost 13 years ago. And look, for Steve Kaufman, you got a great signature. S-A-K, number one of 200. I mean, there are some of his numbers you can't read. This is perfect. The Steve Kaufman, the late Steve Kaufman. I am at 400 going once. I paid so much more. If you want a rare, and he is a pop artist. He worked for Andy Warhol. He did everything and uh, supported... So many charities, $400. This is a shame. Going once. Oh, that hurts. $400. Going twice. Take, yeah.
Okay, so I'm at 400, and someone's checking, and somebody's checking. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make them happy. I got to do this off air. Let's move that out of the way, Highbury Chapel. All right. Yes. Alan Fingerhut died, I believe, in 2020 or 2019. He was the founder of Fingerhut Graphics. Alan Fingerhut found Jang T. Fang. Alan Fingerhut 2382. Alan Fingerhut is the reason Jang, who is the father of the Yunnan school. And that is so important because one of his books even says, right here, Ashley, the father of the Yunnan school. Now notice, Wilson, it doesn't say the red-headed stepchild. It says the father. Alan Fingerhut, rest in peace, he said it was Jiang Ti Fang was the most important change in Chinese art in a hundred years. And what Jiang Ti Fang did when he was 13 is he went on a, a field trip. There's me with Jang, <coughs> probably 10 or 12 years ago. That triptych sold for 380,000 in Hong Kong. And here's a couple pictures. Me with Jang on my, my old network. He was a good guy. He's still alive. He travels back to Hong Kong a lot. Now, millions of people Travel to China every year. And when they get at the People's Palace there, you go inside and there is a room for every province. Inside the Yunnan province is that mural. It's stone force in the great halls of the people that was done by Jiang T. Fang. There is the Yunnan room. The artist and the artwork in there, one of them is Jiang T. Fang. Now, just to give you an idea, Alan Fingerhut said he is the most important, influential Chinese artist of the last hundred years. He's a Picasso of China, child prodigy, showed so much talent at young age that he was allowed to attend the prestigious Central Academy of Fine Art in Beijing. He graduated with honors. He lived through the oppression of the Cultural Revolution under Mao where his job was to paint propaganda posters for Mao by day, and at night he started working on the Yunnan school. He took a trip, a school trip, and it was on that school trip he saw the caves of Dung Wong. And I am going to show you the caves of Dung Wong here. Give me one second. 
This is the Yunnan region of China. There you go, Wilson. Now, in the 1920s, European archaeologists excavated these caves. They have been covered by sand for hundreds of years. And what they saw when they got inside was absolutely life-changing for Jiang T. Fang. He was 13 or 14. And he saw wall after wall from different dynasties showing their idea of China. He saw Asian Absaras, goddesses sent, uh, sent, by the, sent by the gods to protect the emperor. They were called Absaras. And he saw paintings that date back thousands of years. And he walked away going, you know, the woodblock print, which they teach in the British world, they say came from China, is not the earliest Chinese art. The earliest Chinese art is the art you see on the caves of Dung Wang and the symbolism and their ability to try and make it three-dimensional and to tell a story. And each dynasty had its own symbols. Every single Jiang T. Fang that Alan Fingerhut produced sold. They're all sold. And you can see, when you look at the Yunnan province, especially right here, Wilson. It borders Burma. Look at that, Vietnam, Laos, Thailand. This is a piece on canvas called The King. Now, here, is the last published price sheet. Oh, I forgot to show you. If you ever get to the, one of the largest parks in China, Bright Future in the People's Park in Beijing, millions of people walk past his work in so many places. In 2012, they had a huge show for Jiang T. Fang. I was invited to go to it, but it was the same year I was invited to go to the Hermitage and see Sasha Basari in Russia. Speaking of Sasha Basari, the package has gone. For, uh, it's finally in New York on its way to us. After traveling from St. Petersburg to Istanbul, where it resided for two weeks. Here is the last price sheet ever done by Alan Fingerhut. Notice every single piece sold out rare. You get to the canvas pieces and you see the canvas pieces 36 by 36 right here. Uh, King 37 uh, wow 
4,500, 17 years ago. Every single piece was sold out rare. These are trading for about 12 to 17,000 now. I have Roman numeral deluxe edition number 21 out of 1. 65 the Roman numeral deluxe edition 16 to 19,000 it's the only Jang T Fang I have here tonight Ashley they're beating on me Kiki what should I do They are beating me up like the red-headed stepchild. Without mercy. It's like that one coach, the bad coach and the karate kid. No mercy. Cove was his name. But anyway, what should I do? I got a $20,000 piece of art. Roman numeral del de uh, deluxe edition. First king I have come across in years. You see, gallery price and art brokerage, it's to the moon. Here's what I'm going to do. How much? Ashley wants 12000 to open. I appreciate it, Ashley. I know you're greedy, but that's not even being that greedy. But here's what I'm going to do. I hope you're out there. I'm going to give someone an opportunity right now. It's also been uh, Jang hand embellishes it. All the gold Jang puts on it, everything. That's yeah, a $20,000 piece. Watch this. $900 to open. $200 increments once we get the open. Every single Jang that Alan Finger had had, I bought him, I bought a lot of them in 2004 and 5. At the time, I was on a direct shopping network. It was hosted by the late Art Garabedian, great guy, and the late Rex Bernard. And we would, I, I, I would sell every one. And piece like this, I would add eight, nine, ten bidders for it. That's too cheap, but I'm going to open it 900. It's deluxe edition, Roman numerals, in perfect condition. I have some Azule tonight. Are you kidding me? I can't get an open on a $19,000. Every single piece was sold out by January 1st, 2005. All gone. And I have the deluxe edition, Roman numeral, hand embellished by Jang T. Fang. And I don't have an open. Okay. Matt, using all the knowledge at your command, pick the best Azule where we can show everybody who Guillaume Azule 
the youngest man to ever be accepted in the permanent archival collection of the Louvre. Guillaume Agelé, been the cover of Print World Guide many, many times. Sold a piece to the late Ronald Reagan in called Encounters. He sold a piece to Yitzhak Novin of Israel and a piece to the late Yitzhak Novin, the late Anwar Sadat of Egypt. I'm trusting Matt to use all the knowledge at your disposal. What does he say? How long? Folks, I have eight or nine very rare Agilets. Take a look at Guillaume Agilet in his own words. That is the perfect animal. You don't really choose art as a career, you know, you're kind of born into it. You know, you don't wake up one day and say, I'm an artist or whatever, just like the old cliche about poetry uh, that uh, you don't have to be writing poetry to be a poet, which is very true. Art is, is a big word for something that is just, it's work, it's just work. What seems fairly simple at a first glance could actually take years and years of experience. And the simpler it looks, the better, because that is really where the experience pays off. The Illustrated Horse. This is the case of an idea that I wanted to have a horse that would retain its you know, shape and, 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 and strength and, and, and all the, the, the speed and, and everything, and yet be in a sense a part of a, of a total environment. By total environment I mean instead of having just a horse, it has several layers and levels on that horse, which mean that you could almost take the piece and turn it around in any position and still have quite a readership in it. For instance, there is the head of a tiger in the entire background. If you tilt it to one side, if you tilt it to another side, you'll see there are two horses there. Point is, you don't have to look at it as just a horse. You forget that it's a horse, and, uh, and, and, and then it doesn't tell you the story of a horse. So I call the illustrated horse because it has all these layers in it, all these levels. Well, I have been working with Azoulay for 20 euros, approximately. And the very first job I did for him was an etching, a carved etching. And uh, I was very surprised when I met him that he was speaking French, actually. You have three or four images in the same image. Okay, exactly. I have to say, the fact that he's, he speaks French is helpful, too. You know, we have a very good common background here. The relationship with uh, someone like Pascal is, uh, is built over many, 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 many years. I mean, it was over 20-some-odd years. 
In our business, once you start to have a relation, a business relation with an artist, usually it's a lifetime. <laughs> it happened that after having been working for so long, he trusts me very much about uh, what, uh, what he wants, and uh, I feel kind of free with him. And uh, it's, it's a very interactive process. In front, celle-ci, je m'en suis servi. It's it's good. It's a comfortable relationship because you don't have to say much to know exactly what you mean. He tells me what he likes, you know, and I try to translate it on the into a print, and he gives me his feedback. I change the print. It's kind of a dialogue actually going on. So this original drawing is shot and uh, enlarged to the size of uh, the print and it's enlarged on a miler. And that miler here is going to be our key to cut all the different films that we need to print the different colors. One for the body of the horse, one is the background, and the third miler, which is the mane and the tail of the horse. Of course, those four milers have to register perfectly on top of one another. They're perfectly registered. And then, when those three miles are going to be printed with the chorus, we're going to end up printing the black. So a lot of different steps. We don't realize how we are witnessing evolution every day all around us. There are animals that are not finished. They're not at the end of their journey. I mean, they're still in things. So I cited the kangaroo because it's a perfect example of an animal that is not there yet. I mean, look at the kangaroo. It looks like a big rat with, you know, uh, uh, the small uh, arms. It, it, it doesn't make sense. It's just, it's not, it's not finished, you see? But a horse, that is the perfect animal. I mean, the horse, it, it's completely come to total fruition. It's right there, and you can really behold it. It's just, my gosh, what else can I add to this? That's it. We just exposed this mirror on the screen to the light and the light has hardened all the emulsion of the screen that has been exposed, but what is under the ruby film here has not been exposed and is going to be washed away in the next step. The work that I do is basically a distillation of my thoughts and uh, I try to bring the level up rather than lower it down, which uh, unfortunately is a lot of what we see around us, you know, uh, there's so much mediocrity, but in a way it reflects our own mediocrity. And so I try my own little way, if I can possibly elevate things a little bit in my own work, you know, in my own little stone that I bring to the edifice around all of us. We have the print with the colors we printed yesterday, the mane and the tail of the horse, and the background that was printed two days ago. Everything looks really beautiful. We're very happy with it. You see how the colors are blending from the dark red to the very light one, and that blend is perfectly smooth. That's really great. I'm very happy with that. You know, Moroccan born, <laughs> North Africa, you gotta wing it, you know, I mean, you know, things just don't come easy. I never had the basis, you know, I mean, uh, schools and what have you. So you really go through life winging it. And to this day, I feel it. Because one of the problems when you wing it, as I said, is that you constantly have to test yourself in other words, every time you do a new work, it is a new work. It's as if you're doing it all over again. It's as if you're starting from scratch and you say, my God, have I learned something? No. So that's one of the problems of self-taught. But in a way, I tap into this. Uh, it gives me a lot of freedom in the sense that uh, uh, you kind of rebel in, within yourself. Say, who cares? You know. And by that attitude, you sort of free yourself. And uh, so many times, you know, what usually would have a structure, in my way, is totally unstructured. You know, and uh, I like it that way. <laughs> you just fit the screen on the press, 
and we just locked it in place so it doesn't move because we cannot afford the slightest movement in the screen or we would lose our registration. One should never fear color in a sense that I see many artists, you know, concerned about where the color hits and where the light and all. And I say, well, this is not photography. I'm going to deal with color the, deal, the way I deal with my lines. It's an impression of a horse. It's an impression of the muscle structure. And the same way uh, is my approach to color, which is color should be telling not a story, but a visual element. And at the same time, it has a life of its own. The squidge is going to push in through the screen and through the paper and the flow bar when the whole thing comes back, it's going to catch the ink and bring it back to the starting point. Since that um, a split fountain, we have to contain the three colors. Every step has to be done, you know, perfect. Okay, here we have the last color that has been applied as a split fountain from red to green. We have four or five different colors here that are blended together. So that's the final product for the chorus. That's a lot of stuff that makes me happy. I mean, you know, breathing every day <laughs> makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. As you see, all the chorus have been printed now, and we just put glue down on the background, and Svetia is laying the leaves. And as you can see, those leaves are extremely fragile and it's a time-consuming step because all those leaves have to be put down by hand, one by one, until the whole background is covered. Those leaves will be brushed away and only where the glue is, the metal is going to stick. And after that, we're going to print the lines. So it's great, it's just the right. And what I like about the top of it is that it really melts into the neck. We're all influenced by what we see, but you know, but yesterday I was looking at the proofs that we, we did on the silk screen. I was looking at the screen and I thought, amazing how Chinese my horses look. And I don't know why, I, I have nothing to do with Chinese art, you know, it is just, you know, it, so, but it was funny, it, it looked very Chinese and it wasn't the first time I had that impression. So obviously there are influences and things, but one is not even aware of. The color in the main is so great because it has so much of this color, and yet it's not the same color at all, but it really, really marries very well. All right, all righty. I'm really concerned. This is so much good, 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 I'm concerned. You know. Sounds like deja vu all over again. Etching is a sort of a link to a very, very long past. And the beauty of etchings is that what you do today is the way it has been done for centuries. I mean, there's really nothing really new about it. Again, with the comfort of someone like Pascal Giraudon, you know yes, that you're in good hands and that he's gonna take care of, of that baby. But, but now you see uh, the importance of that etching when it comes to having the hidden horse here, you see? Yeah. You see, because it's, it's right there and it's so completely there. The etching is actually an image of the hidden horse that's within the silk string of the uh, illustrated horse, Cheval Illustré. It, it's sort of a uh, accompanying piece in a way. It uh, sort of uh, explains the other piece. It, it's nice, it's like a twin. Uh, and you're looking at an element from that work. Like I said, I didn't choose this or choose that. You know, I basically I was a lazy bum all my life. You know, so I decided, you know, uh, why don't I just do what I like to do and uh, go through with it? And that's it's an attitude that worked for me. I don't know that it's going to work for everyone, but uh, there's something that everyone actually enjoys doing. And the idea is, why don't you just be the best at what it is that you enjoy doing, you know? And uh, if it's a labor of love, then it's, you know, you've, uh, you've really accomplished something. And 
I really enjoy what I do. Folks, hi, that was Guillaume Agile. I filmed him many years ago. Guillaume Agile is the youngest living artist to ever be accepted in the Bibliothèque Nationale, the permanent archival collection of the Louvre. Guillaume Agile is sold to Baron Robert de Rothschild. Uh, if you go visit, Ronald Reagan's uh, Presidential Museum. There are two Azulets there, and Counters is one of the two. I don't remember the other one. Guillaume Azulet was born in Casablanca, Morocco, immigrated to France, and from France immigrated to LA, while the United States made some trips in between. Guillaume Azulet is a legend. I have six pieces that are so off this planet, rare, I, I don't even know where and how to show them. I'm going to start with Pisces right here. You talk about a rare piece by Guillaume Agelet. Look what he wrote on this piece. First of all, you see this heavy embossing mark which means it was an etching. That the whole, the, the lines were made by pushing a copper plate on this piece. And on those lines, he had black ink. Then he took the time to hand watercolor. A man with not just one, not two, not three, but seven pieces accepted by the director of the Louvre into the Bibliothèque Nationale. He calls this Marquette Colors. The Marquette to Pisces, done by Guillaume Agile, number one of one, the only one. This is what he used to make the edition. Signed Guillaume Agile. Item number is I don't see one on the back. Do you have one? Two three six zero. Yeah, retail fourteen thousand dollars minimum. I'm not going to charge anywhere near that. I just want to show you six of the rarest azulejos that you're ever going to see. Hand watercolor by a man with seven pieces in the Louvre. Piece number two. Number five of only 15. Stardust, number five of 15, Publisher's Proof, done in 2017. Hand laid gold leaf, hand embellished, the yellows, the reds, all by Guillaume Agile. Very rare. Retail. 9,500. Ashley, can you grab that one? Because I have the rarest Azure I have probably had in five years right here. Five years? Yes. Look at this, and it's going to be up there a little high, but it's okay. Look at this, 
Number one of one. HC, Hoss de Commerce, friend of the artist, Harlequin Horses, done in 2010. Hand laid silver leaf. This is the number one friend of the artist. Retailed 22000 He sold some of his drawings for 25000 35000 but this is number one HC. Silver Leaf. Retail 22000 Absolutely stunning. Number one, HC. The only HC, friend of the artist. Now, Ash, uh, now Ashley, I almost called you Ashley. Uh, oh, look at that. This is stunning, folks. This is huge, too. What, what, what is the measurements on this? Well, this would be 32 and a half by 49 and a half. Uh, 50 inches, pretty much. Yeah. And then when you frame it, add a couple more. That is stunning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is as rare as it comes. Look at that. Mom. Look at that. What? Mom. Yeah. Okay, okay. The question is, is that a harvest moon? Oh, it is. How do you know? Horses are howling at the harvest moon. Look at that horse. Which one? That one next to you. That's just oh, the, all of these. This is amazing. All right. Now, folks, and keep that close. You can put that right next to the Roy over there. Yes, sir. Look at this. Copper leaf. Oh, I love the copper leaf. It takes two. Two of ten. Publisher's proof. Retail seventy five hundred. <clears throat> Stunning. I wish I had more. This is like uh, Stunning. This is like somebody, this is like Elvis singing my way. Or Frank Sinatra, one of the two. Ashley, can you move the silver leaf? The copper what? The copper? the copper leaf, yeah. My bad. The <laughs> copper leaf. Oh, look at that moon. What? That moon. Yes, that's a blue moon. Oh, blue moon. Yeah. This right here is a weird piece. It is called... La suit, the jumps, the jumper, la suit, done in 2019, state two, number four of only 15. It is. So you got silver, copper, and gold. Yes, and I also have the last Noah's Ark. Right here, I showed I, I showed Stardust, right? Two at five of fifteen, I think I did. I'll show it again, but take a look at this. Ashley, can you grab this? Because this is the last one, number twenty-five of twenty-eight, done in twenty twenty-one. Noah's Ark, hand lay gold, hand embellished by Guillaume Agelet. He did everything. He's never used a ruler in his life. And look at that, etched in a copper plate. Stunning. Genesis. Genesis. A 
so folks, tell me which one you want to start with. Because if you're out there tonight, the way the night's going, you're going to get a deal of a lifetime. You, which one? Which one is that? They want to start with Genesis. Oh. Graphics. Here's the graphics. That's the last Genesis. It's double signed by Guillaume Agile. I'm going to go so easy, folks. Tell me which ones you would like to see. Guillaume Agile has been the front cover and back cover of Print World Guide many times. Selma Sli Smith, the lady that used to uh, do the Print World Guide, just loved Guillaume and his work. Tell you what. Let's start with the Marquette in color for Pisces. Uh, Gemini? Gemini, my bad. <laughs> Gemini. <laughs> I love how he writes Marquette in colors, one of one. He only did one. And this is... I don't have the number, but Ashley does. Or tell me which one you're interested in. Which one are they interested in, Patty? I, I'll take... Uh, the Genesis, uh, I'll, t I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, give me one second, Patty. Here's what I'm going to do. I uh, keep everybody online. I'm going to start with the Marquette to Gemini right here. All right. And what does it say the retail is on this? 14,000. Why is it 14,000? Because seven pieces of Guillaume Agile are in the Bibliothèque Nationale, the permanent archival collection of the Louvre. This is one of one, the only one done. He hand watercolored it after he did the etching with the embossing marks and he hand watercolored. 14,000 retail price. Watch this. Let's get some action going. I hope you're Agile fans. Look at that. He hand watercolored this. A man, the youngest living artist to ever be accepted in the Louvre. $500 to open. Once we get the open, $200 increments. This is a one of one, the only one ever done that he hand watercolored it. At $500 to open on the only one. Here. Here, right here. Look at this. This is just one. Wilson of the covers of Print World Guide, the foremost guide to what 
art prints are worth. It's got Guillaume Agelet on the front cover. It's got Alexandria and Nikita on the back cover. You're talking about a $14,000 piece there. You're talking about a piece that Guillaume Agelet did an etching. We had a gold leaf that we sold a few weeks ago like that. This is Guillaume Agelet, the only one he ever hand watercolored. The Marquette in color. <coughs> Galleries want 14000 I put it up for 500 to open, and I don't have an open. No open once. This is going to be down for the count. Tell you what. Let's. Which one? Lasso, yeah. Let's. <laughs> All right. Call me if you see any of these. Matter of fact, hang on, before I play, uh, folks, uh, camera two also, uh, after this one, just call me. Tell me which one you want. I'll work deals with you. I'll, I'll price them, whatever you want. Take a look at this. This, all those dots, everything, was hand embellished by Guillaume Majulet. It is 5 of 15, publisher's proof, Stardust, done in 2017. Stardust? Yes. That is stunning. Guillaume Majulet. Hundred years will go by. Guillaume Agelet will still be well known. I'll be dead, he'll be dead. Guillaume Agelet is one of the most important artists on the planet. Call me up. If you're interested, call me up. Make me some offers. I am going to Put the most difficult piece for anybody in the free or unfree world to find up right now. This right here, as rare as it comes, BC 2380. Okay. My bad. Look at that. The number one. 22,000 completely sold out. Harlequin Horses. HC, friend of the artist, number one. Silver leaf, hand laid. Call me up, talk to me. This is is this is the rarest Agile I own on this planet. And folks, when you look at this, when you look at every inch of this, Guillaume Agile has used every bit of knowledge at his command to make one of the most stunning, large silk screens with hand laid silver leaf. And look over here, sign Guillaume Azulay, Harlequin Horses, one of one. 
on the other side. $22,000 gallery price. Call me up. Talk to me. We, on this one. What's that? Uh, bottom on this. All right, I'll tell you what. Are we talking Harlequin horses right here? Yes. Okay. I'll tell you what. What? And this is Mr. Who's Z? D. This is D. Mr. D like David. D, D like David. <laughs> All right, Mr. D, I got a price for you and I thank you for calling. Before I give you the price, this is the rarest Agile I own on this planet. This is the only HC he did. This sold out rare. And they are listed at 22000 now. But I, you called. I got a price for you. I am going to walk over. I'm going to walk over right now. All right. Christmas gift. This is better than a Festivus gift. Are you ready for this? So cheap, I probably paid more. This is as rare as Agile will ever get. <coughs> What's that? What is a Kiki? Thinking. I'll tell you what, for a couple hundred more, I'll frame it up, and it's already huge, but for a couple hundred more, let my framer get a hold of that, and you'll go nuts. Wait, hang on. The one before this one, which is 20. Not this one. Uh, oh, Stardust. Stardust right here. Is that the one? Um, for this, uh, Stardust, oh, I'm going to make someone real happy. And, yes. And this is stunning. I'm showing Stardust. Every one of those dots was hand put there by Guillaume Agile. And, and, and Kiki, this big one, though, this Harlequin horses. And what, what do they say? I'm, I'm flexible. Talk to me, folks. Look how big this is. Hi, Barry Chapel. Which one, Kiki? The Harlequin horses? Yes, sir. I mean, this is too cheap. It's 24 grand, but I, I, Kiki, I'm, I'm, I gave you 20. Is as rare. The only HC completely sold out. Now, Kiki, I, I got somebody else interested. To,
That is the rarest azule I own on this planet. Yeah, this one right here is in a league of its own. Harlequin horses. Well, chopper like I just folks I hope you're out there because here's what I am going to do yeah I just that is probably below my cost I just got to get moving and It's unbelievable. That is a deal of deals times 10, Kiki. I hope he says yes. Yeah. This is as rare of an Ashley as I've ever had. The HC, the number one. Oh, you can't get any better than that. But sold. Ashley, this is gone. Thank you. Mr. D, thank you. Yes, now, here comes a copper leaf right here. All right, let's get busy here. This is, it takes two, number two of ten, copper leaf. What do we have? What's the item number on it takes two? It takes two. Copper leaf. Ashley, what's the ad number on it takes two copper leaf? Two three six three. All of these are sold out. This is number two of ten. See you later, Kiki. Bye. People are, and take care of that Jang that I just sold. And Patty, what, uh, take a look at this because I, I need my glasses. What is the retail on? Oh, there it is. 7,500, number two of 10, uh, publisher's proof. Thank you. Another one's flying out the door. Just. Hey, folks, have fun with this. I can't help you if you don't take it for this. I don't know what to see. I'm going to open this for 50. It's going to be $100 less than I paid. And, oh. Why do it, Chapel? That's so rare. $450 to open, $100 increments. That's hand-laid copper leaf by the king of the line, Guillaume Agelet. 
You can visit his work at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Museum. And I just want you to see what this copper looks like when you walk past it. Watch this, Wilson. Folks, I hope you're out there. That is so cheap. Do I have the open on this? It is, it takes two, ca copper leaf. That's so cheap. I'm, we have the open. 450 has been bid. Next bid would be 550. We're at 450. You love Stardust. 450 going once. 450 going twice. That is too cheap. If I'm going to lose money, I want to get it over with. For what? The one back there? Well, let me finish this with Chopper. Going once. Going twice. Sold. You just call him Chop? Chopper got the copper, but she <laughs> she just calls him Chop. Yeah, Chop. Chop. Chopper. Chopper. All right, now I'm de getting low on Azure Lays, and I've sold them way too cheap. Take a look at this. Stardust. All right, on Stardust, I'm going to make this. Eh, can they come up a little? Mr. S, oh, can you do 50 more? I want to make everybody happy. But I'll, I'll tell you what, on this, uh, 450 to open on Stardust, 450 to open, $100 increments once we get the open. Folks, I'm running out of Ashley's, and I sold them way too cheap. This is Ashley's favorite Ashley. It's a publisher's proof done in 2017. Anybody interested in Stardust? That's Ashley's favorite piece. Okay, we're at 550. 550 has been bid. $550 going once. I am taking my time. Five fifty. Beautiful, hand embellished everything. Five fifty going once, twice. Fair final warning sold. All right, now I am running out of Azulees. I have La Suit, which I means. Did 
you know a little bit of French, Wilson? Un um, peu. What does la suit mean? Could it mean the jump? La suit. <coughs> Sign Guillaume Agelet, number four of only 15, done in 2019. EC 2381. Tell Chopper. Th what? What is it? Oh, yeah. Wilson says it means the jump. And I can't say it. it does not mean the jump of your lifetime. Wilson, what is wrong with you? <coughs> this is a there are children watching this show. I can't believe it. All right. Um hey Ash. On this. Gold leaf. Number four of only 15, state two, $500 to open, $100 increments once we get the open. Yes, I have gold, I have silver, I have a Navarro, I got a lot of cool stuff. And I want to thank everybody for watching me. It's been strange. I don't mean just here tonight. I mean like today, driving here, except for one spot, no traffic. I'm driving there and I'm thinking to myself, maybe everybody's dead. Maybe it's like that uh, Charlton Heston movie, you know, where a meteor crashes or something that, I don't know. Maybe it's like 2001, a space odyssey. Anybody want to open at 500 or get me close now? The last Noah's Ark. Okay. So which one is available? Oh, do we have more than one bidder on it? Well, I'll tell you what. All right. Uh, so these are the last three Azulees I have right here. I have Noah's Ark right here. It's called Genesis. In the beginning, it's number 20. 3 of 25 or 25 of 28. Guillaume Agile only did an addition of 28. It is hand laid gold. I'm just going to sell it outright. If you don't love it, send it back. $675. It's a deal of a lifetime. Look at the gold jump out at you. I paid more. That was a mistake, but I'll honor it. Um, on the copper leaf right here, right here, this is double signed by Guillaume Ashley, number two of ten. And what is the name of this piece? What's the item number? It takes two. It takes two. What did we start the auction off on that, do you remember? No, you let me do that? All right, I'll start the auction at $450 to open, $100 increments, that's like a billion dollars. So I have three and I also have La Suit the Jump. So those are the last three Azulays. I thank you. 
I have some gold coins I want to show you. I have some silver coins I want to show you. I have two $5,000 Mark Bravers that I want to show you, but call me on the Azulays. Now, tell you what, let me do something smart. Ashley, can you move these two away for a second? Yeah, just keep them close. But I just want to put this one on the easel. Yeah, I sold. Yeah, I don't want it to compete with this one. So, so here. So what you want to do is just take that one. Well, I, I don't know about all the way. Just, just, you know. Take a look at this. Double signed by Guillaume Agile. Artist proof EA. Artist artist uh, 25 of 28. Genesis 7, 9, 2021. Every single one. They show up in Print World Guide, the latest copy, at $4,500. Whoever wants it, $650. I'm not going to auction. I'm just going to sell it, give it a good home. That's the last one I have. It wasn't even supposed to be on the show. I keep it over here, and I said, well... I never compete with my customers to have something this rare. I'm going to price it at so cheap. So that is Noah's Ark in the beginning, Genesis. Done by Guillaume Agile, the youngest living artist to ever be accepted in the Bibliothèque Nationale, the archival collection of the Louvre. And that is stunning. That is a hard piece to create. And when you get that high above look at Noah's Ark. Now go up a little higher though. Uh, you see the orangutan. I modeled for that. Yeah, coming close on his face. Not the elephant. To, 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 to your... No, no, right here, the orangutan. Him. That's a gorilla. Oh. I'm sorry. I got it mixed up with my cousin. That's the gorilla. Folks, this is amazing. At six, what did I price this at? 650. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the only one I have. I was saving this. For my own collection, but I never compete with customers. And Guillaume Magellay not only signed it twice. So that is available if you are interested. I have the Copper Leaf and Lasso left by Agilet. Now... This Mark Braver, a Park West artist, has three people in it. I think they're on bicycles or something. If you take a cruise, this is BC 2375. Mark Braver paints a lot of different sizes. This is a little touch of pointillism where he uses heavy use of colors. Hey, this is painted on board. This is not even canvas. This is museum board. Look at that. And he, sometimes he signs his name, Mark Braverson. Mark Braverman? Okay. Well, just to give you an idea, 
on a dinky little Mark Braver. And this is little. 24 by 12 or 24 by 20, 1600 and twenty-five dollars at Q Art. This is huge. What's the size on this one? This one is thirty-one and a half by thirty-nine. Thirty by forty for all practical purposes. It is framed. Yeah, seventy-five hundred. And I know a lot of you have taken cruises where they have Park West auctioneers. You know, they're going to get you a little liquored up. Uh, maybe a little more than a little. And they're going to tell you how these sell for 7500 and how he's an amazing artist. And he is, and how he works exclusively with Park West, which I believe he does. And that is an original oil on board, canvas board. Tell you what. Yeah, this is 7,500. What is this is stunning. What's that? Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give someone a heck of a deal. I'm going to lose 1500 to open, and once we get the open, $200 increments. I also have something Ashley does not want me to sell. Because she, she wants it. Look at this baby Navarro. Mouth blown, hand spun, Jean Claude Navarro, and done in 1988 on this. Look at that, an early Navarro. Gold in glass, I'm gonna get to that. Folks, get me close on the Mark Braver. I have two. All right, Chapel. As graceful as ever. I got an idea, Ashley. Uh, for die hard customers. I got an idea. Pick which one you want. The baby Navarro, I'll tell you what I'm going to do on the baby Navarro. Unless Ashley's going to buy it. Ashley, what would you price BC 2379 for? And I just got to show it. Golden glass. Jean Claude Navarro died on December 30th, 2014. He is unbelievable. Done in 1988. What do you want to price this at, Ashley? And who is your customer? Um, Tamara. 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 That is too cheap. Seven hundred ninety-five dollars. 
on a baby Navarro. Look at that. Look at all the gold he put in there. And this is one of the earliest, 1988. He signs his name, he scribes his name, and he writes his name. Now, on the two bravers, I'm going to be braver than braver. <laughs> All right. I need a pad. Look at that little Navarro. That is too cool for school. Yeah. I got an idea on these bravers. I got a price. And if you look up BC 2375, what comes up in the computer? So cheap, I can't even say it out loud. I really can't. Either of these bravers, and this is Merry Christmas for next year. All right. Ashley, this is too cheap. Way too cheap. Um, with credit card fees and everything. This is a fraction of what he charges for his smallest ones. Oh, are you ready for this, Ashley? Folks, camera two, if you've been on a cruise ship and you've seen these go for 7500 I wrote a price down so cheap. The argument's going to be who gets which one because uh, this is crazy money. I have had a strange show. Do not fall over gasping. Are you ready? That's cheap. What? Yes, either one. Patty, don't kick me in the shin again. If you feel like kicking me in the shin, kick Wilson. He can take it. He's an old timer. How old are you now, Wilson? 102. 102. <laughs> either one. Either one. I just lowered the price so low, you're going to need a step ladder. To get any higher. I mean, it is cheap. I hope you're out there because I want to get back to some gold, which I think everybody. I'm telling people, wait till you give her that new price. And I'll even go to the beach and get her some sand to feed to the baby Navarro. I just gave a price so cheap on these bravers. Which one do they want? That is a really cool Navarro. I have not done it justice tonight. One of the earliest ones. Mouth blown, hand spun. Diamond scribes his name and signs his name. Call operators because I appraise these bravers so cheap. It's, it's unbelievable.
right, that's the unstable one, Wilson. You see, that's how you tell. Anybody on these? Done. You just bought it so cheap, I'm, I'm embarrassed of myself because that is so cool. I don't even have many Navarros and to have a gold leaf one, that sold to Patty's customer. Now, folks, I'm going to, where do I put it? No, <laughs> right there. Okay, folks. I'm going to walk in front of the camera, sorry. All right, Navarro's gone way too cheap. This is what you need. You need gold. You don't believe me right now, and if I'm wrong... I'll never live it down, but I think you haven't seen anything yet. I also have 1914 S's, just like this coin, an MS64. The competing network is selling them so much higher than me, but it doesn't matter. 1914 from San Francisco, an MS64. I have two of them. They charged 70 or 50, I don't know what it was. It was a ton. I'm going to sell them to you at $2,995. One of the rare of the rare of the rare $20 St. Gaudens to get, the 1913D from Denver. That is as tough of a coin. I'm going to walk quickly past the camera as you could ever find. Only 393,500 minutes. They had an ad, they had a story about this on Google about how the 13D uh, is, is so very rare that only, it's only f the 13D is just 4.4% of the 1928 as far as grading. NGC population is less than 1% of the most common 1924. Total managed 393,500 and you can see that D so well on the coin right next to the date. Call me. Get yourself some gold. You're going to need it. And what they don't ever tell you about, which they should, is for eons, it's always held its value. It buys pretty much the same thing. Go to the Federal Reserve's own website. Type in a year. Type in inflation. You'll find the price of gold in 1978. And you guess what? One ounce of gold in 1978 buys about the same thing that one ounce of gold in 1958 bought. If you compare the same items. Here we are in 2022, almost 2023. I'd get any of those or I'd get the 20 franc. 0.1867 of an ounce gold, about a 20th of an ounce. A fifth an ounce, my bad. I personally believe you're going to need it. And I lowered the price on these Bravers. So cheap. Call me. I only have 24 minutes. No, I don't have 24 minutes. I have 30, no. 10, 20, 24 minutes.
That is a really rare coin. That is one of the rarest St. Gaudens. And who are you talking to there? Who? Gary. Gary. He what? Oh, Gary, call me. Well, let him find me. And Ashley, do you see what I lowered these Mark Bravers to? Yeah, if you ever want a Mark Braver. They are cheap tonight. Camera, uh, whatever. <laughs> Folks, I have about 22, 23 minutes left. I just want to tell you. I completely, 100% believe the ride you're going to see gold take over the next year and a half, two years, maybe a little sooner, maybe a little later is going to be one for the record books and it's going to be a good ride if you own it you're going to be amazed at what some of the rare coins or just the 20 franc swiss gold used to give every american pilot either a 20 franc swiss gold or a british sovereign to trade with if they got shot down they hold their value. They always have, and they always will. You can't just print a 20 franc coin. You gotta mine it, and it's hard to do. So let me see, which one are they interested? Say what? Tell Gary I got a deal for him. And somebody, for how much? Bravers, one second. Folks, these are $7,500 on a cruise ship. This is one of Park West's best artists and he deserves to be. You're seeing a combination of pointillism and just an amazing ability to bring depth to canvas. There's 7,500. I showed Ashley and Patty a price that is so low I can't even put it on TV. Talk to Ashley, talk to Patty. Because I got a price so cheap, you're not going to believe it. Oh, they are incredible. Yeah, that's Patty saying how incredible they are, how beautiful they are. And if you could just put call for secret off-air price, Matt, because it's it's so it's so low. I'm gonna I'm scared to put it on TV. I really am. It's that great of a deal. Look at that, and you saw the secret price I put. And Wilson. That's it. Wilson, there's an old saying. 
Curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought him back. They call. You didn't want it? All right. It is a really special price. Now, Gary needs to buy that 13D. Oh, I got a price on these. So, how old is your sister? And she's your older sister. You know, I'm just going to give you a little bit of advice. You should have pounded on her more. You should have just... What's that, Ashley? Bam! You know, you really should have. Oh, she's the run of the litter. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, they're killing me tonight. Uh, all right, I got a deal for. Is Gary there? Gary, Gary, Gary. This is one of the rarest coins I have had on the show. They only minted 393,500. That is minuscule. You know, today when they man uh, manufacture coins, it's in the billions, hundreds of millions. This was $20 in 1913. You can see a very clear D right next to the date, meaning this was manufactured in Denver. The Denver Mint struck this coin. They did such a good job striking at it. Look at it. Very few bag marks. Most of the 1913s, because the Denver Mint supplied coins both north and south, north to the Dakotas, south, you know, the Mississippi and down that way. I mean, once you got a Denver Mint and you can get one, that grades MS64, it's unbelievable. Only 1.1%, uh, I got I got to give you the whole facts here, uh, less than 1% uh, of, of the more common 1924. And let me show you something, look at that back. I believe this is one of the greatest coins I've had on the show. Made so few, most of them, are in low, low grades when you find them. Very fine, extra fine. Some don't even have a readable date or mint mark. And you got almost a full ounce of gold here. Look at that, you got it, look at that back. This is just a beauty. And I lowered this and lowered this, and I got a special price for Gary if he's watching. I know I should raise it because all the coins have gone up over the last three weeks, they're getting harder and harder to come by. What does Gary say? Because I got a special price for Gary. Don't miss out on this. I want to own this. I mean, I really do not mind keeping this. Okay, perfect. He has a special Gary price. Special Gary price. And don't... Yo, know, and... Yeah, you need this, Gary. I'm walking over to Ashley right now. Oh, he does. This is a hell of a coin, too. Um, it's for you. Thirteen S. All right, on the 13D, on the 13D, 
I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to give you a deal. All right, hang on. Let me find it. That. Anybody where you got at that price, Gary? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to get my... I just offered him a price that takes 50 years in the coin business. And I haven't been in the coin business 50 years. That is a must buy if he can swing it. You could always try like tripping her down the stairs. Yeah, go like that, you know. Ah, tell you what, 40. Working so tight. And, and this is a hand. All right, that's sold. Thank you. Excuse my head. I'm walking through here. 13D is sold. It, now, I have two of the 14Ss. It's a good thing they're encapsulated in plastic. Look at this. That a competitor who has a another that is similar to us, but so much more expensive. I can't mention their name, especially after Ashley mentioned she thought she they were under investigation. But I can't prove that. That's just what Ashley told me. Is that what you heard, Ashley? What did I hear? They're under investigation. Who is? Never mind. I don't want to get that going again. Yes, the 13D is sold. Where's your sister? Because I got some suggestions for her. What's her? Amy. Amy, there are certain poisons. Yes. Now, Matt, I, I, I'm just saying. I watch a lot of Perry Mason, you know. How bad do you want to do her in? She loves, she loves me. Do you really love her? Say yes. Say yes. She's going like this. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what she symbolized. I don't want to get anybody in trouble, Wilson, but if you could bring the camera up a second. This is what Amy just did when you weren't looking, all right? She pointed at Ashley, went like this. Yeah. <laughs> She's going, let me push her. No. She's not being, well, quite frankly, she is. All right, but anyway. So I have two 14 S's. I have these two paintings at a fraction of what you're going to get them on a cruise line. What do they say? And folks, I'm running out of time. I only got 11 minutes left. They are, that is an original Mark Braver. All right. And I can't believe it, Wilson. I have a lithograph signed right here by Ronnie Wood of the Rolling Stones. I pray said it's so cheap. From the international edition, Ronnie Wood is a big art fan, a big art artist. I only have two or one of those left. And anybody on the 1914S, last two, and I lowered those all the way down. I'm going to get $2,995. Look at those, those are stunning coins too. Minute 1914S. 
One reason they're in such they're so hard to come by is San Francisco. They would be put in bags of 500, and they put on a train. And San Francisco, some of these coins had to go all across country. They're going to get a lot of bag marks. And we'll put up the graphics, if you could, Matt. The 1914 S. And I even gave, I even, bl All right, look at that, Wilson, look at that little S. These have such clear S's on my 1914S and MS64. Boy, go up uh, a half a grade, a 64 plus, and Amazon writes a ton about it. All of my 1914S's are just stunning. I handpick every coin that comes on this show, and those are beautiful. I can feel it, Ashley. Someone is thinking about picking up the phone. They are. So, Wilson, in eight minutes, we're off the air. I get in my car, drive home, walk my rescued happy hound dog, Ginger. Call it a night. But when you leave here, you go to work. And what are you going to work? Melrose, Hollywood, Boulevard, Avenue. Which one tonight? Santa Monica Boulevard. He's what? Well, I don't know about that, but what do you think about his high heel shoes? I mean, that is pretty cool. Now, is it true, Wilson, if you could click your heels together, they light, they light up? Yes, they do. That's cool. Which one? I'm desperate. Tell him yes. Thank you. Now. I want to thank everybody. I got to sell one more thing. I have to. Here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Don't have time for that. Got six minutes. So the Genesis is gone, right? Yeah. All right. Now, I have a Royal, but I don't have time to explain it. Well, I do if I talk really fast. <laughs> Jose Rio is a master Spanish artist. That can, anyway. Which one? Which one are they interested in? Do what? You're the devil. You see that? Do you hear that, Wilson? She just told Patty try 666. Oh, my goodness. I got to ask your sister about that. Hey, Amy. Amy. When, when, you, when you saw Ashley growing up, did her ever, bed ever rise up like in The Exorcist? Did she levitate? Spinning? Yes, I knew it. I knew it. Never mind. Yes, I told you. I don't want to scare you, but she's the devil. Yeah. 
She's like Linda Blair, but Linda Blair, well, never mind. Linda Blair's a cool actress. Her character was a devil. Right, which one are they interested in? All right, folks, tell me what I can do for you. And, and I thank you. I got five minutes left. Nobody wants a Ronnie Wood of the Rolling Stones. Nobody wants Helvetia, 20 franc gold coins. Believe me, they travel light. Fighter pilots use these in case they got shot down. They are AU plus coins. This one is 1930 something. I didn't bring my loop. I got a lot of cool stuff here. Love the Helvetia star on it. They have different cantons. In 1982, I lived for the summer in Leysin, Switzerland, a little mountain town near Lausanne at the former American College of Switzerland. Look at that, there it is. Look how nice that is. That's just, that's 0.18, 1.1869 of an ounce. All right, which one do they want? This, this was a sold. You sold it, good. <laughs> Nobody wants the Bravers. I got an idea. Which of these bravers do you think is the nicest braver? Ashley, Patty, which one is the nicest braver? The bottom one. Okay. Purple? Purple people eater. Oh, that is gorgeous. Look at that. I got a special, special, special last minute price. So cheap. This is way too cheap. Ashley, this is so rich in color. I got a special last minute price. Call Patty, call Ashley. Okay. All right. You, uh, Amy, has they ever, your parents ever tested Ashley for demotic demonic qualities <laughs> what, what is that? oh like oh, yes uh, I only have one minute left let me go to camera two <laughs> I I uh, I want to thank everybody I'm talking to Ashley's sister Amy about early demonic qualities that Ashley possessed but with the uh, right treatment, uh, they're still here. So anyway, next week I hope I have my Sasha Basaris. They have landed in J. They're in New York on their way to here. I also have some really cool coins I've been waiting for. Got a lot of great stuff next Wednesday night. So you have fun. Be nice, Buford. Don't kick that dog. Wilson's mad at you, Buford. Wilson's going to come over there. Wilson, Wilson, Happy New Year. And take care of the demon for me. Bye. Oh, we're still on. Matt, you think she's a demon? Oh, like he's going to tell you you're the demon. I'm still on TV. You were early, Wilson. I'm looking at the clock. So yes, we're going to have hopefully Sasha Basari Originals and we will continue the conversation. 
about at what age Ashley was demonically possessed. And do you think there's ways other than what we saw in The Exorcist to get her, the demons, out of her? You think so? Patty, you know about how you get demons out of people? Yeah, there's got to be another way. I heard electric shock. <laughs> so, Matt, how much time? I'm still on? Oh, well, live streaming. I want to thank you. If you want a 1914S, I have two left. If you want a Swiss franc, please give me a call. I have two bravers that I have lowered down to a, I'm going to lose money on, but give me a call. And then I am going to get out of here and go see my. This is Swiss. Uh, they have point, uh, they're, they're one point, uh, Point one eight six seven pure. So the gold weight on this is just a little under a fifth of an ounce. Point one eight six seven. And they're stunning. Ninety percent. No, this is a this is just a slight a hair under a fifth of an ounce. This is just a, a hair under one fifth ounce of gold. Well, folks, uh, I hope somebody calls up. I lowered this Mark Braver down. Just out of curiosity, Matt, how many people are watching me on live streaming right now? Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you. Hopefully, I got a big art show with Sasha Basari's work. Um, I still have now. No one's called on that. I have an abstract Schofield, but you know what? I want to thank everybody. You have a happy new year, and I will see you next Wednesday night. Hey, will next Wednesday be 2023? Yes. All right. Year. What? See you next year. I, well, I, I'm going to see him soon, but you. <laughs> huh. Wilson, did you ever hear any of the early experiments they did on people that they thought were demonically plagued. Yeah, it can get ugly. Hey, we love you. Buford, don't kick that dog. Thank you. See you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.